they're walking by without having to pay for it. It's not my wife said, stop looking. If you want to look at my roses, that's 50 cents a look to help defray the expense that I have incurred, I have incurred and incur and maintain. No. It's just a positive externality. Now then there are a negative externalities. There are negative externalities. You ever look at a guy who really turned you off? <laughs> God, what a weirdo looking guy. Do you ever offer him money to get off the street? <laughs> God, I can't stand to look at you. Get out of here. It's five bucks. You didn't? Why not? Or did he say to you, hey, you don't like the way I look? Give me five bucks. I'll get out of here. <laughs> But that's a negative. Yeah, I mean, this goes on all the time. I mean, it's, it sounds stupid to talk about these But those, in, in the sense in which the concept is usually used, those are positive and, and negative externalities. What's another, neg uh, what's another uh, externality? Well, you, you have a neighbor next to you, and he throws his garbage into your backyard. Uh, he accumulates the garbage and throws it over the fence into your backyard. His actions are having a negative spillover effect on you. But what's the recourse in that case? In that case, there are property rights, right? You can ask your neighbor to cease and desist, stop throwing the garbage over the fence, and you can insist that he come into your backyard and clean it up. If he re refuses to do so, what, it, what, what recourse do you then have? The law, don't you? There's private property. You cannot violate and damage someone else's property without the owner's consent. And sometimes, to look at physically attractive people, we do pay money. It's called going to the movies, actors and actresses. Okay. Do you like to look at pretty girls? You do. Okay, no doubt about that, okay? Just check. Okay. You never know now. I'm bad, I know. Anyway, so my wife, you know, she tries to not put me out in public because I say things. Anyway, so, um, but now, now there are beautiful actresses, right, and for the girls, there are handsome men who are actors, right? And besides the interesting story of the plot, don't you have your favorite actors and actresses? And part of your enjoyment of them is our, the enjoyment of just physically looking at them there, you know? Why do male actors work out, right? They look good. And why do female actresses obviously work out and maintain themselves? Because they want to look good in front of the camera. That's part of the aesthetic enjoyment of the movie. I mean, that's true. You pay to see beautiful people. So sometimes you pay and sometimes you don't. Now, why do you have to pay? Because the movie theater is privately owned. You cannot have access to see the movie unless you pay the ticket at the entrance of the theater. And then you can go and enjoy the performance, which can include the story, whether serious, drama, action, comedy, but also the pleasure of the actors, their personalities, and their appearances. You pay to look at people on the screen. And that is paying for a positive externality. You're helping to defray the expense of providing that good and service for your enjoyment. Do you think that there would be as many movies produced and as many people willing to devote the time and effort to become qualified and good actors and actresses, that is, reading the lines in front of the camera, as well as maintaining their physical appearance, if anybody could watch them for free and there'd be no compensation for the effort and time and energy that they put into making the movie and maintaining their physical and, uh, uh, and general appearance? I don't think people have been making as many movies with them. Isn't that part of the argument about you know pirating of movies? That the that the, kind of the the movie studio spends maybe tens of millions of dollars, including the salaries for the actors and actresses, to make the movie, and the movies are pirated for which they for, therefore they lose compensating revenue for the expenses that they've incurred in bringing that movie to you. So 
again, the externality is positive or negative. And in some cases, it seems that there's no compensation in one direction or another, and others there are. Now, the problem that we face today with a lot of the externalities with the pollution is, I would argue, due to the fact that we either do not have clearly defined or clearly recognized and enforced property rights. Let me, let me try to give an example here. Let's suppose there's a river. There's the little waves, it's a river. Those are waves. <laughs> Everybody's an art critic. And so here are some houses along the river. Okay, and up the river here, here's a factory. A factory. Now, part of the problems I talk about with pollution is that somebody pollutes the water, for example. So this factory is making some product, and they spew byproducts, right? Chemical byproducts, other types of harmful or unattractive byproducts into the river. And it flows downstream, and it poisons wildlife in the river. It uh, dirties the water, makes it unsafe for drinking or swimming, uh, uh, may give off an, uh, an unpleasant smell, OK? And so it's all, see, this is the problem. Evil business, greedy businessman. See, that's a problem. We have to, but why does this occur? Well, obviously, people have property rights, right, property line. edge, right? That's your property. And certainly if someone threw garbage over your fence of your property, you could complain or go to the, the legal authority and say, tell my neighbor to stop throwing garbage over the fence. You can't do this without my permission. But it seems that this guy gets to pollute the river that borders on people's property downstream. Now why is this the case? It's because you see there's no property rights in the river. Now, in American history, it's obviously what I know more about, uh, in American history, there were times in U.S. history where property rights did extend to, to, to bodies of water, a lake or a river. So your property right, in fact, would extend out to the middle of the river. Okay. So the property right would extend out to the middle of the river. Now, this meant if someone was upstream and started uh, putting pollutants chemicals or other things uh, as a byproduct of their production process into the river and it affected people downstream, these people had a legal recourse, just as if he had thrown the garbage over a fence on the land. Because they could say is that his actions were negatively affecting their use of their property rights. So that the choice then, if such legal recourse was threatened, is that he could either devise a way to produce the product without producing the polluting byproduct. Or he would have to find a way to take the pollutant and, de and deposit it in some other place, not damaging to people's properties, like some landfill that somebody owned, and the person allowed the garbage or the chemical to be put into a secured land a landfill for a fee, and that's the use of that land so as not to damage other people's property. Or if he couldn't devise a way, he'd have to stop producing. Because you can't produce at the expense of harming other people in terms of their property. Now, when these property rights were in effect like this, the problems of river or lake pollution, for instance,